Hey gang, Professor Brown here again. This time we're going to be talking about things you can put on carbon atoms that will change the function of organic molecules. And we call these things functional groups. So here you can see all eight of the functional groups that my anatomy and physiology students are responsible for knowing. So what I'm going to do is very briefly go through each of these functional groups, show you what they look like on a molecule, and tell you a little bit how they're going to change the function of the molecules, hence the name functional groups. So our first functional group is the hydroxyl group, or OH. And here we can see an organic molecule with a hydroxyl group on it. Here's the hydroxyl group stuck on this middle carbon. So adding a hydroxyl group to an organic molecule makes it an alcohol. So this would be isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. Now if we move on to our next functional group, this is a carbon double bound to an oxygen. This is called a carbonyl. And here we see an example of a molecule that contains a carbonyl. Notice this is also a three carbon molecule. All we've done is replaced what's attached to that central carbon from the hydroxyl in the previous molecule to a carbonyl here. But this has changed the molecule from isopropyl alcohol, or rubbing alcohol, to acetone, or fingernail polish remover. So changing the functional group from the hydroxyl to the carbonyl drastically changes the function, the characteristics of that molecule. So let's move on. Next we've got one that's kind of a mashup of our first two, and that's a carboxyl group. Now you might be saying to yourself, wait a second Brown, this is not anything new, we've already seen a carbonyl we've already seen a hydroxyl, and that's true, you have. But if the double bonded O and the OH are both connected to the same carbon, that's no longer a carbonyl and a hydroxyl, it's a mashup of the two. It's a carbonyl and a hydroxyl, so it's a carboxyl, it's a combo pack. Now this molecule is actually formic acid, the simplest of the carboxyl containing organic molecules, and notice it's called formic acid. Often when we add a carboxyl group, we, uh, we refer to that molecule as a carboxylic acid. So this is an acidic functional group. All right, let's move on. Our next functional group is the methyl group, which is CH3. So if we look here, oh gosh, it looks like we've got a bunch. And I'll circle one. So this is actually 224-trimethylpentane, otherwise known as gasoline. So adding these, um, adding these methyl groups to this molecule um, will change the function. If you added or removed more methyl groups, that's going to change the temperature at which it would ignite. It would change its volatility. So changing the methyls changes the function. A lot of the proteins um, in our body um, are going to be methylated. Uh, we can also methylate our DNA, and that determines whether or not certain genes get turned on or off. Our next functional groups are actually, we're going to do two together, that is the amino and the sulfhydryl group. So the amine or amino group is over here on the left, here you can see the NH2. Uh, this is the amino acid cysteine. So all amino acids are going to contain an amine group, we'll talk about that in another video. And this is what allows our amino acids to hook up with other amino acids to make up the proteins that form the vast majority of the dry weight of our bodies. Now also this particular amino acid contains a sulfhydryl group out here as its R group, and uh, as part of its R group, excuse me, and the sulfhydryl group is going to allow this particular amino acid to form cross bridges with other cysteine amino acids in a protein, helping them assume their functional shape, uh, allowing them to carry out their function. All right, two to go. Our second to last functional group is a phosphate group, and here you can see it over here as part of a nucleotide. This is the nucleotide adenine. And these phosphate groups are what allow these nucleotides to hook up together to make up our DNA and our RNA. Now oftentimes you'll see the phosphate groups abbreviated as PO4, but here you're seeing it with hydrogens attached to two of those oxygens. Most of the time this molecule would be shown, or this functional group would be shown with those hydrogens missing and those oxygens bearing a negative charge. We'll see phosphates come up again and again throughout the course of anatomy and physiology, particularly uh, in regards to uh, regulation of protein activity. Many of our proteins are controlled by adding or removing phosphate functional groups. All right, and our last one is 
the acetyl group, C2H3O. So it's essentially a methyl and a carbonyl mashed together, much like a, a carboxyl was a hydroxyl and a carbonyl mashed together. Uh, the larger molecule seen here is acetylcholine. Uh, the, it, this is the neurotransmitter that's responsible for muscle contractions, uh, skeletal muscle contractions, among many other things. So there's our acetyl group. There's acetylcholine. We'll also see the acetyl come up when we're learning about metabolism as well. So that's pretty much it. We've got eight functional groups. That's what they look like. Make sure that you can uh, make sure that you can draw these out so that uh, if you're ever required to, you can recognize them. So that's it for me. So have fun. Make good decisions. Don't drink and drive. And remember, only yes means yes. This has been Professor Brown. See you later.